I feel very fortunate that this property is actually the second property of Mrs. Crown and Shields that I have had the privilege of restoring. Uh, in 1995, we purchased Mrs. Newland's estate, which included uh, Frank Crown and Shields' art studio that Mrs. Crown and Shield had built for him, uh, along with, oh, it was about seven lots. And, um, Ironically, I was also involved in the Island School and the very first organizational meeting to explore whether or not we thought we could get another school on the island was in the living room of the um, art studio. I feel like I've had a long connection with Mrs. Crown and Shield and I've been very interested since we purchased that property in the history of the DuPonts and Crown and Shields and how they came to be on the island. Um, Frank's brother, Ben, uh, originally used to come down to the island fishing with friends and he introduced the island to Louise and Frank. And they purchased this property, I would say probably in, I don't know, early 20s. And in 1927, um, this guest home and the horse stable were constructed. Um, all of it being built with bricks made on the beach from sand and shell right here in Boca Grande. Well, I love the history of Mrs. Crown and Shield and her husband. I've seen pictures of the horse frolicking on the beach as Mr. Crown and Shield stood on the beach fully dressed in a suit. I always thought that was amazing. Um, and, and I love how she was. She was quite a character. She reminded me a lot of my own grandmother, just full of life, laughter, and love for children primarily. And um, she, she loved to take the children out on outings. Um, by boat, on picnics, take them swimming. Um, rumor has it that she used to take them out and divide them by gender and let them go skinny dipping in different areas off the beach in Kaya Costa. Um, and she was, she was not the most modest person, especially when she was swimming. And I hear there are many stories of her out here in this pool. Uh, she enjoyed skinny dipping and but anyway, I, I think she was, was really quite a character and genuinely cared for the community and, and really got to know uh, the children and their families on the island. And I, I feel very blessed and um, privileged, but also I feel a huge responsibility to take care of her property and rehab it for the next hundred years. So when I met um, with the preservation architect um, and we brought in the engineers to um, survey the property, um, we are probably gonna have to develop some type of jack system to go underneath the wall and jack it up all at one time to get it at level. But we're gonna to have to go back through and chisel out all the repairs that have been done over the years where they filled in the cracks because they can't straighten the wall until all of that is done. So that, that alone will be a tedious job that we'll do over the summer to um, uh, take out all the filled cracks so we can hopefully right the wall. Uh, the house itself is pretty stable. It's not moving too much, but we do have some issues with the bricks because of the moisture that was held inside um, when they did paint the inside of the pool house. Um, there's some deterioration there, so we've got to um, see how we can either repair those bricks or maybe put some larger windows in to save that wall. The wall facing the water obviously is the wall that we're most concerned about. Um, there's a lot of iron rebar in the brick which you don't really want to use in the salt water so there's a lot of space 
uh, above the arches that is very carefully going to be taken apart and, and fiberglass rebar put in. Um, same with the wall cap all around the wall. Um, we fortunately now can either cut coral stone or we also have uh, another stonemason that thinks they might be able to duplicate this in the same manner that it was made. But nowadays we have um, densifiers and things to put in the concrete that they did not use back 100 years ago. Um, however, these bricks have been here for 100 years, so <laughs> I, I think they did something right. Um, they're, they're still holding up quite well. The inside of the house, a, a large part of the house is fairly new, built in the 70s. Um, and the, I will show you inside the home um, the original horse stable uh, space. Uh, it was, I was trying to put, pour a concrete floor and, and put coral stone flooring in and I didn't have enough space because when we, we pulled up the flooring, all the broken off bricks from all the horse stalls were all still there and I couldn't get a, a, a thick enough pour for a floor. So we ended up going back over the floor with wood flooring. It's still a little creaky, but it adds to the character of, of that room. I tried to save everything that I could from the original stables. I tried to expose the bricks as much as possible, um, but there were a lot of holes in the wall and tar on the wall that I, I couldn't save at all. But we did put in some arches to, to at least expose some of the brick in, the, in this space. It's a charming little cottage, and um, I try to pay homage to the fact that it was a barn, and um, I'm really happy with how, it, how it's turning out. I do have plans to uh, add a master bathroom suite to the house and, and some other renovations um, to the house itself along with the pool house. Mrs. Crown and Shield was not the only woman that was interesting who happened to live on this property. Uh, Mrs. Corsini, who currently lives in Porto Ercole and is 99 and a half years of age at this time, was in boarding school in Switzerland when the war broke out. Um, everyone from the U.S. was obviously sent home. Um, she found life back in New York boring and she spoke fluent Italian, French, and German. So she joined the um, OSS and worked for Jimmy Angleton um, in Italy. And she had previously met her husband in boarding school and and they reconnected after the war and began, began dating and eventually married. And they wintered in Boca Grande um, for many years. I'm talking with an architect that renovated Cotizan in Sarasota. I um, had her come out, we are in the process of coming up with a plan of rehabbing the pool house and the angel wall. Um, we've also engaged some engineering firm to help us with that process. We're um, looking at how we best restore the bricks um, as well as add some stability um, to the building um, in the event of a hurricane that it could withstand a little more than it can at the time. We're going to enter through what currently is the front door. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to end up with the, the front entrance, but um, this is the current entrance. Um, this living room was at one time the master bedroom and bathroom. Um, and then I opened up all the walls in, in the space and now the kitchen 
It used to be the laundry room and a hallway down to the kitchen.